I am going to finish this um, message series called Orphan Heart. We have had so much response to this series, like a lot. And it's been pretty amazing, even just the testimonies of this. And so today I want to be a little bit more engaging uh, when it comes to this message. So I want you to really pay attention. I promise you, you're all going to get something out of this today. Because I, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm talking about the heart, I'm talking about all of our heart. Nobody gets away. Every single one of us have at least one issue that we have yet to address in our heart. Whether it's because you're denying it, whether it's because you're afraid to confront it, whether it's because you're running from it, whatever it is, but every single one of us have at least one issue. All of us here, including myself. And let me tell you something, it's a hard issue. So let's just start with John 14, 1. Here's what Jesus says. Listen to this. Jesus straight up says this to his disciples. He says, let not your heart be troubled. And how many know that we're living in some troubled times, right? So Jesus says, hey, listen, don't let your heart be troubled. He says, you believe in God? Believe also in me. And so in other words, what God is simply saying in this verse, he's saying, trust me in times of trouble. Now, let me talk about 2020. Everywhere I go, and I don't know if you have the same issue, every conversation is about everything that's happening right now. Whether it's COVID, whether it's injustice, whether, you know, it's politics. Like, how many of that, like, that's like the ongoing dialogue everywhere we go. We're all experiencing this, right? And so I believe that 2020 has been the year of less trust, of mistrust, of deferred trust, and the year of no trust at all. I really sense that in the spirit. I believe that there's so much mistrust, deferred trust, less trust, and no trust because you don't know what is the truth and what is a lie. And so we are, we are experiencing, which is interesting because it's almost like before COVID, we all had problems. Now we forgot our problems because we have adopted new problems. Isn't that, isn't that funny how all of a sudden we forgot about all of our other problems because now we're too busy adopting new ones. We're worried about new stuff. We're concerned about new stuff. We have new fears. We have new issues. And so what God is saying, he's like, hey, this is the time where I need you to trust me with all your heart. With all your heart. But it's hard to trust God with all your heart when you have an orphan heart. When you have a heart that feels abandoned, when you have a heart that feels rejected, when you have a heart that feels whatever, you finish a sentence. God's saying, I'm the heart healer. And so the pressure of this world will literally make you project what's really in your heart. What do I mean by that? Now, I don't know about you, but I've been ticked off a little bit on social media. How about you? I know you all probably wearing your little, you know, halo angel little hats and everything, but, you know, you can't help but to look at social media and be so disgusted and sometimes disappointed with some of the people that you say you love, right? Can I get an amen? I'm being real. Like, I'll be like, what the, what is wrong with that person? Are you cray-cray? You know, and you just like, but, but it's, it, it becomes an issue of the what? The heart, right? It's the heart starts because here, here's what the scripture says. As a man thinks in his heart, so is she, so is he, okay? So all of a sudden, we start seeing the issues of this life, and we start, start developing or conditioning our opinions, our behaviors, and our habits based on what's happening outside. But how many know that the problem is not what's happening outside? The problem is what's happening inside of us. When you talk about racism, bigotry, prejudice, when you talk about anything that is against God's word, it's called sin. It's a heart issue. And if we can begin to deal with the internalization of the issue that we're having in our world, then we can start seeing transformation. That goes from our house. That goes for our children. That goes for our work. It starts in the heart. Now, if you're sitting here and just kind of like, like checked out, zoned out, you want to listen today. Please listen today because watch. When you hear this message today, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really do something in you. 
I'm telling you, like today I'm not playing around. This word, it, there's been so many distractions today, it's amazing. We've never had so many distractions on a Sunday like today. You know, but I know why. Because this word is a seed of deliverance for all of us. So don't, so ch stay checked in, don't check out yet, okay? All right. So we begin to project what, what's really in our heart, and that's what you're seeing right now. This issue, it's always been there. Everything we're seeing, it's always been there. It's not like, oh, we just have racism. No, it's always been here. We just have prejudice. No, it's always been here. We have hatred. No, it's always been here. It just took, it took something so tragic. It took a horrible experience to expose the reality of what we're seeing right now. Amen? And so uh, I don't know about you, but I'm not a big numbers guy, you know, like biblical uh, numerology and all that stuff. Like, I'm not into that. But there's truth to it, and I love it. I, I, I love the fact that there's, some, there's, there's something about numbers that God gives us. But I started thinking about, like, 2020, and I don't know about you, but I think most people say 2020 has probably been, like, the worst year of my life. You know, I'm sure many people feel that way, but that's a lie. It's not the worst year of your life, you know. But, but I started thinking, what does this number 20 mean? Numerically, like what does it mean biblically? And here's what it means. You're going to be, listen, this is where, man, your hair's going to be blown back. And if you don't have any hair, you're going to grow some hair right now. Ready? <laughs> number 20 means this. Look at this. It means number 20 is associated with a trial, suffering, and labor. The number 20 is a time of trial, suffering, and labor. Now, I know that us men, we can't say, we can't even begin to think about what labor pains feel like. Ladies, does it really hurt to have a baby? Obviously, you're too quiet. must not. Okay, okay. No, it, it's, ladies, can I hear you? Don't let a mask, you know, sign. Is it painful to have a baby? Okay, well, let me tell you something. 2020 is painful for so many of us. And, and, and here's the interesting thing. As I was studying this number 20, here's what it says biblically. It's associated with trial. It's a period of waiting. And if it is successfully completed, the reward is generous and full of God's love. And in other cases, there will be justice and there will be righteousness. That is 2020. But notice this. When you read the definition of the biblical understanding of the numerical number 20. It says, if you complete it, you'll be rewarded. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that God will not waste anything. God is using every test, every trial, every trouble, every challenge. And it's to test our heart whether or not we're going to trust him. Have you noticed, this is the hour that really reveals and projects the reality of our heart, the true heart, the real me, the real you, that says whether or not you trust God in this season right now. Like this is the, listen, they are saying, statistically, if you were here last week, 25% of Christians in America will not return to church anymore. 25% of Christians will not be coming back. Everybody say trouble. Now you understand why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. But believe in me. Trust in me. And so God knows something about this. And when I start thinking about this number 20, I start thinking about people in the Bible. Okay, what 20 number shows up in the scriptures? When you think about Solomon, Solomon never had a house. Even though he wanted a house for himself. But he committed himself to build the temple, God's house, before he built his. And it took him 20 years to build the temple. 20 years. Another person was uh, Jabin. He was the Canaan king. He was oppressing the children of Israel for 20 years. That's why I believe that in the times we're living, I really believe that God has been developing and preparing the right they that will have a voice to deliver those that are oppressed. And so right here, we see that this guy, Jabin, the king of Canaan was oppressing, but God was already raising up a Deborah and a Barak who managed to release God's people and set them free. 20 years. Abraham. Let me tell you about Abraham. God told Abraham that if, if he finds at least a minimum of 20 
righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, I won't destroy the city. God is, listen, there's, there's this number. There's this specific group of remnant of people that God is already preparing, developing. He is, he is setting them up for success. But the question is, is, is your heart ready to sustain what God wants to do in your life? We have to be ready. Now, what is the issue of the heart? Well, let's go to Mark chapter 4. This is Jesus breaks it down. Here's the heart issues. You ready? Verse 15 through 20 says this. Everybody say the seed. I got seeds today. Everybody say seed. You all see that? Okay. He says the seed. This is where I'm going to pick up from last week. The seed that fell on the footpath represents those who hear the message only to have Satan come at once and take it away. In other words, some of you, just because you have ears, doesn't mean you're listening to me or those of you watching. You could just literally just be sitting there and just, you're just a, a body sitting on a chair, but you're not engaged. You're not connected. And don't blame it on me. It's your ears. You're responsible for your ears, not me. Amen? And so that's why the Bible says, let, the Spirit of the Lord says, let him who has ears, let him hear what God is saying. And so this context of the scripture, Jesus is saying, hey, listen, there are some seeds, and these seeds are falling in different kind of hearts, and this is the representation of the hearts, and so he says, the seed that fell on the foot, foot, uh, footpath represents those who hear the message only to have sin come at once and take it away. The seed on the rocky soil represents those who hear the message and immediately receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, I would say deep roots, they don't last long. They don't, in other words, when trouble comes, boom, they're gone. They fall away as soon as they have problems or are persecuted for believing God's word. The seed that fell among the thorns represent, represents others who hear God's word, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the worries of this life. What is crowding up your heart right now? What are you crowded with? Listen, you can have a crowd of unforgiveness of people. You can have a crowd of resentment, a crowd of disappointment. You can have a crowd of fear. What is crowding up your heart that's keeping you from receiving God's freedom, God's healing, God's restoration? But all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the worries of this life, the lure of the wealth. And the desire for other things. So no fruit. No what? No fruit is produced. And the seed that fell on good soil represents those who hear and accept God's word. And produce a harvest of 30, 60, and 100 times as much as has been planted. Let me tell you something. Everything has to have a place to land. Everything. This seed God created. So that it lands somewhere. God's word was created so that it lands somewhere. What do I mean by that? A car needs to land into a parking space. A fox needs to land into a hole. An airplane needs to land on a tarmac. A boat needs to land at a dock. The seed needs to land in the soil. Do you get me? So there, every time you and I are coming here, there are seeds being thrown, and the question is, where are they landing? Are they landing in the soil of my heart, or are they just kind of like? This is what God, God wants this. He wants it in our heart, right? So he comes, boom, Right? He wants to get that seed in that heart. And so um, if, if I drop a seed in a nest, in a hole, in a parking space, in a tarmac, it's not going to do anything for me. And so it has to land in the right place. This seed of the word, it must land in the right place. As I'm throwing it out to you, it's got to land somewhere. Hopefully it's doing something inside of you. Hopefully it's... Hopefully you're like, boom, like, oh, that's a good word right there. Boom, don't touch it, it's COVID. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's like, wah! <laughs> Aren't you glad God's water is pure, right? It's clean. There you go. And so the word is going out. Every time you open your Bible, the word is just boom, boom. Question is, is it landing? And we don't have a lot of landings. Come on, we don't. 
we have a lot of God. Uh, this 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 this, uh, this uh, tarmac is closed. <laughs> Try another day. And so, um, as as I'm preaching this, the the word, the seed is being scattered. And and how many know that the soil is not your head? Say that with me. The soil is not my head. The soil is my heart. See, too many of us, we think that as, as long as I get enough scripture, memorize enough scripture, come on, if I can go ahead and recite e- uh, enough scripture, I'm good. I'm good. No, no, let me tell you something. Uh, God wants to plant the seed in your heart, not your head. It's the heart. And so what I'm saying is your head is not the soil for the seed of God's word. It's the heart. The seed of God's word is the only thing that can change your heart. Nothing else and no one else can change your heart heart no one i'm waiting for that person to come to me and get things right with me even that person can't get it right last week it was by god's grace i had someone call me after seven years and apologize to me i was shocked i was like wow and this person said hey i heard your message i just had to come i had to call you and say please forgive me for things i said about you like oh dang i know i didn't know you were talking about me He's like, yeah, remember when I said, I'm like, no, I don't remember that. No, I remember when I said that. I'm like, no. I'm like, Dan, you said a lot of things. I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. (laughs) Mark chapter 7. But he did. He called, this guy called it. I I respect that guy for that. He's awesome. Mark chapter 7, verse 21 through 23. Look at this. Now, now, what, what what is Jesus saying to us? He said, evil thoughts come from where? They come from where? Where does it start? Where do our issues start? You know what we do? Our sin nature says, oh, it's because of what happened outside. Now it gives me the right to act the way I am inside, which makes sense because our outside experience conditions our inside heart. And so Jesus says, hey, let's get this straight. Evil thoughts come from the inside, from a person's heart. So, so do sexual sins, so do stealing and murder, adultery, greed, hate, and cheating come from a person's heart too. So so, uh, so do desires that are not pure and wanting what belongs to others and And so do telling lies about others and being proud and being foolish. All these evil things come from inside a person and make them what? Unclean. And so the nature of man, okay, is sinful. It's to have a sinful heart. And how many know that we inherited that sin? From who? From the seed of Adam. But how many know that then Jesus came? Come on, the new seed came. And he crushed the bad seed, right? He crushed the weeds, and he said, no, now I'm bringing freedom. For whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And so everything is of a seed. So you have to understand this. So everybody say this to me. Say, let the seed land in the soil. So we have to start taking the seed and let it land. Now, what does that mean? It means this, that what we develop on the inside or what we allow on the inside of God's word will determine what comes out of us. Here's what I mean. Acts chapter 13. Look at this, verse 22 through 23. It says, and when he had removed him, who's him? Saul. Saul was king at this time. Saul had some major heart issues. And so God's saying, okay, I need to remove you from this position. And he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my what? My own heart. How many know that God is looking for men and women after his heart? He says, who will also do all my will. It's not just, God's not just looking for people to say, oh, I love you, Jesus. You know, it, God's not looking for people to say, I love you, God. That's not what he's looking for. God is looking for people that have a heart for him, that have a heart that's chasing after him. God is looking for people whose heart is completely committed to him. But it's not just, it's not just to say committed, like, oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm committed to God. Okay, but love is a verb. There's an action that goes with that commitment. And so God says, the reason I have chosen David is because he is a man after my own heart, and he will do all of my will. And how many know that we have a free will? And so often, our will doesn't want to line up with his will. And the reason it doesn't want to line up with his will is because we have too many heart issues. 
And so David, who wasn't perfect, but one thing he can say is that even as in, in his imperfection, he was willing to repent and get things right just so that he can accomplish and do what God wants him to do. Amen? So he says, now look at this. This is the really cool part, verse 23. From this man's what? From this man's what? So how many know that right now your, your, your seed is producing something? And so he says, and so from this man's seed, according to the promise, God raised up for Israel a Savior, Jesus. Out of, out of whose seed was this man raised up? Jesus. Out of, out of whose seed did Jesus come out from? David. Think about this. The seed that I put in me has the capacity and the ability to produce all kinds of great things. Great children, great family. And so when you read this verse and you keep hearing seed, I'm like, wow. You know, God wasn't looking for a warrior, you know, when he picked David. Some of us, we think like, man, yeah, David was a crazy warrior dude that just went to battle and can just put, he can put a whoop on. God wasn't looking for someone talented. God wasn't looking for someone with skill. But how many know that so, so often we, we look at the outward while God looks at the inward heart? So that brings me so much joy that God is not looking for skill. He's not even looking for pretty or good looking. He's looking for men and women that have a heart after his own heart. That's what he's looking for. God was looking for a man that would not only have a heart for him, but a man that would do his will. Amen. That's what God's looking for. Um, everybody say this when we say the soil doesn't determine the fruit. See, it's not the soil that determines the fruit you're going to have. It's the seed that determines the fruit. What do I mean by that? The anatomy of the seed, the DNA of a seed. This seed is what exactly, for example, let's just say this was an apple seed. This apple seed is going to produce what? It's going to produce apples. Now, I can go and get, let's say I grab this apple seed. And I said, apple seed, I'm going to put you in the ground. And you're going to reproduce for me some oranges, seed. Man, this seed would look at me and be like, uh-uh. I know who I am. I'm an apple seed. And I know what I produce. See, what am I saying? I'm saying that what God is saying to us is it's not the soil that determines, it's the seed. See, your heart, your heart is already sinful. We know that. God said that. You can't change that. But his word, his seed can change that. So it's not your soil that he needs. It's the seed you need for, in the, for the soil you have right now. And this seed will produce some 30, some 60, some 100-fold. See, the seed of God's word is the only thing that can uproot bitterness, unforgiveness, hatred, Racism, bigotry, all those things, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, only the seed of God's word. You know why? Because this seed is called the seed of conviction. And the seed of conviction is the only, it's the only way that you can have a turnabout. You know what a turnabout is? It's to turn from a direction that you've been going that all, all it has done is cause you more heartache, more pain, more suffering, more bitterness, more resentment. And God's saying, why don't you just let my seed, let my seed. See, this apple seed, it doesn't have an identity crisis. The apple seed knows exactly what it can produce. So what am I saying to you? The reason Satan comes and steals the seed is because he's, he's afraid that God forbid you get the seed and you get set free. Because if you get the seed, this seed then allows you to produce your true identity. Satan is after the identity, not the soil. Let me say that again. He's after the seed, not the soil. He already knows the soil is corrupt, but the seed fixes the soil. Are you getting this today? I hope you're getting This is not too deep, is it? This is so elementary. 
I promise you. It's like third grade stuff right now. Like they probably taught this message in Sunday school already. I don't know. Say it with me again. The soil doesn't determine my fruit that I'm going to bear. The seed does. The seed. The seed knows exactly. In other words, the soil does not determine my identity of the fruit. The seed does. This seed determines who I become. This seed determines who you become. Just imagine, like, I don't know who you are, but just imagine, just imagine. I mean, I'm sure you're a great man. I'm sure, you know, you're, you're an awesome person. But just imagine when the seed, when the seed comes in with whatever it is you're dealing with, when you just, you're like, okay, God, I'm just, I'm going to be open. I'm going to be, oh, I'm going to, oh, I don't like what I hear. I don't even know if I agree with what I hear. But see, it's not whether or not you agree. It's, it's when you're willing and ready to accept the implanted, implanted word of God. He says, where I can save your soul. The seed is the only thing that can save our soul. No seed, no salvation. Are you getting this? Okay, let's finish this up. So David understood the heart of God. You know how he understood this? He understood the seed also. Here's how I know. Do you guys remember the battlefield with uh, the Goliath and, and the Israelites? You guys remember that battlefield story? I hope I don't have to go all into it, right? So you have this Goliath and the children of Israel, and they're afraid. They, the promise is there. God has already spoken that he's, they're going to win. And yet they couldn't accept the win. They couldn't accept the promise. They couldn't accept the seed of God's word. Then David, God's seed, shows up on the scene. And mind you, it's, it's interesting. I've read this story so many times and I didn't see it until now. See, this story wasn't just about a giant. It was about knowing your identity. Because check this out. When David showed up on the scene, he didn't say, hey, man, I'm going to knock you out. I'm going to punch you. I'm going to uppercut you. I'm going to cut you. No, you know what he said? He said, you come to me with a sword, a javelin. You come to me with a shield. You come to me with all this armor. You, but I, I, the seed of God, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And today, you're going down. Amen? See, he came knowing who he was. See, we twist it. We, we, we perform outward demonstration. When God says, no, but I'm looking, I'm looking at your heart. I'm looking at your heart. That's what matters to me. And so, obviously, David was showing them, listen, guys, the reason that we're taking this Goliath down is because we know who we are. We know what we produce. And not only did he take Goliath down, but let me tell you something. He cut the issue of the heart. He cut Goliath's head. What are some, some things that you have to cut out of your heart right now? David was willing to confront this guy. He even called him uncircumcised, you know, uh, he said, you, you, you uncircumcised Philistine. You know what he was really addressing? That word, see, in, in the context of when, when the children of Israel were being circumcised, it represented a covenant with God. So he basically was telling Goliath, guess what, bro? You have no covenant and I do. I, I know, listen, I have a relationship with God, but you don't. So guess what? We're going to win today. See, when you understand your covenant... No matter how bad the trial is, no matter how bad the trouble is, no matter how hot the heat is, you already know we're going to win. Listen, even if you were to die, you win. We go to heaven. So David shows up. He says, I know who I am. And I know what I reproduce. And you don't have a covenant, but I do. And so here's how I know this. Because in Deuteronomy 10, 16, we're almost done. He says, therefore, circumcise. Everybody say circumcise. Because circumcise the foreskin of your... What is he saying? He says, man, you got a lot of stuff wrapped up around that heart. You got a lot of fat. Come on, that fat on that heart is just, it's choking you. Come on, that fat in that heart, that sin, man, it's getting, it's clogging your arteries, your spiritual arteries. He's saying, you need to circumcise. We need to cut 
some things out. He says, therefore, circumcise the foreskin of your heart and, and be stiff neck no more. In other words, do not be rebellious anymore. Stop, stop trying to make excuses for your attitude, for your whatever, and let's go ahead. In other words, the scripture he is referring as the circumcision of the spirit, the inner man. God's saying it's time to deal with the inner man, the real you. Are you hearing me? It goes deep into the soul when you deal with the heart. This word, the seed, goes deep in that soul. Deep. Man, let me tell you something. You'll be reading God's word. All of a sudden, you're like, man, I'm good in that area. Like, man, I ain't got no unforgiveness issues. All of a sudden, you're reading. You're like, ooh. The, 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 the seed will just be like, you know, ooh. What? And, and all of a sudden, you start thinking it. Like, the Holy Spirit will even reveal a person's face or a name. Be like, you know, you got an issue with so-and-so. I know I don't. You know you got an issue. We need to go. We need to go. But I hate. But that neighbor's from hell. Yeah, but God says, but I'm, I'm calling you to produce. Come on, how many want to produce the favor of God? How many want to produce the blessing of God? Come on, how many want to produce the peace of God, the joy of God? In the midst of a chaos, chaotic world, you can say, you know what? Yeah, it's chaotic, but man, when the dust settles, I'm still standing. Amen? Because his seed has helped me in a dry land to still produce some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. That's what God wants for every single one of us. Say covenant. Look, last verse, stand to your feet. Let's go. Last verse. Did you, you guys get something today? He says, so what do I do, pastor? What do I got to do? That, that was you screaming. Listen, you don't have to do anything. What do you mean? I don't have to do anything? No, see, the seed does the work the seed does the healing the seed is what brings the reconciliation the only thing you need to do is you need to open the door of your heart and you need to start getting some of that seed in God can't do that part for you only you can God you can pray all you want to deliver you but until you get this seed till you get God's word inside those issue places, unforgiveness places, resentment places, bitterness. I don't care. Like, I'm so, I hate that person. You can point the finger as long as you want. Let me tell you something. All it does, it gets you more bitter, more angry, and more resentful. Oh, but you don't. See, you're just trying to validate your attitude. It's not going to change because only God's seed of his word can change your heart. Say this with me. Say, I'm responsible for this heart. Not they, not them, not he, not she. I'm responsible. When you know that, let me tell you something. When you know that, you'll break the handles off your life and you'll start taking ownership of your own heart. It's your heart. It's your heart. So he says this. So when you get to the city, he says, I will give them. Look at this. I'll give them one heart. Ever say one heart. He says, I'll give them a new heart. And put a new spirit within them. How many would like to have a new, fresh spirit? Come on. Come on, a spirit of joy, right? Maybe, maybe your Christianity is just so, it's just so dry. Just kind of like, just dry. Like there's no passion. Like when was the last time you led someone to Jesus? When was the last time you, you shared your faith with someone? When was the last time you told someone that there's hope in Christ? You get dry. You can get just so dry. And he says, I will take Look at this. I will take. Who will do it? God. He says, I will take from them the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. That is responsive to my touch. How many want a fresh touch from God? Come on. You want a fresh touch from God? You, you just begin to open your heart and you let that word start filling you up. You start listening. You start hearing. Listen, you won't even know when you changed. One day people will be like, you've changed. You'll be like, I have? Oh, yeah, you don't talk the same. You don't look the same. Man, when, there's this grace on you. What? I remember that you were a person that was always living for grace but no truth. See, grace will overlook truth. And then truth, when you're just all truth and no grace, truth will never show grace. 
Truth will only point the finger and, and expose people, but when you serve a God who is 100% grace and 100% truth, let me tell you something, now you can have a transformation. God is saying, I am 100% all in for you. That's the God we serve. So he says, I want you to get a fresh touch. That they may walk in my statues and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they shall be my people. And then I will be their God. Come on, I want you to just address your heart right now. I want you to close your eyes, please, everyone. Those of you watching online, those of you in this room, just begin to just ask God, God, where, where have I missed it? Because God says this, he says, I will show you mercy if you confess your sins to me. Now, I'm not going to have you start confessing your sins up here in this altar. No, I want you to confess it to God. What issue in your heart has been crowding your heart, has been occupying your heart too long? Who has been occupying your heart too long? What problem has been occupying? Listen, it's so crowded that there's not even enough room for God to come in. God's saying, hey, I want you to give me that issue. Give me the issue of your heart. Stand in my presence. Open your heart. Let my seed of my word come in and let my word bring healing. See, we're so used to being performers. We're always trying to find the next five steps to healing. Let me tell you something. You get in the presence of God. As you get in the word of God and you watch, you'll supernaturally be changed. Like you won't even know. Suddenly, bam, all of a sudden, you, 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 no longer, you no longer heard about that person who hurt you. You're no longer angry about that person anymore. All of a sudden, you're just like, I didn't even know you offended me. I didn't know I offended you. I'm so sorry. Why? Because you just have so much freedom in your heart. But it's only through the seed of the word. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give that to him right now. Just pray to him right now. Confess your sins. And tell him, Lord, I'm going to turn direction. I repent. I won't be a slave to this sin no more. Come on, just, just tell God. Pray to him. Don't sing. Pray. Tell him, Lord, I know who I am. I'm your child. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because I am. A child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, oh no, because I am the child of God. I am. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Because I am a child of God. Father, we come boldly before your throne of grace. And we ask you to forgive us as we confess our sins to you, God. Our shortcomings. Our pride. Our arrogance. Lord, give us the strength to stop blaming people for our healing or for our lack of healing. Lord, help us to be mature to know that we, we are responsible for our own heart. And no one owes us anything. Please forgive us for living as entitled Christians, thinking that, that you owe us anything. You've given us everything, God. Forgive us for being so ignorant sometimes and so arrogant, Father placing demands on you like you've been so good God you have forgiven us of our sins you've, you've, you've liberated us you've delivered us Father God you've, you've given us a promise with a purpose and a future with hope and so Father forgive us for being in, entitled Father and to be, for being angry at you and mad at you and blaming you or blaming people Father God not realizing that Father your word is sufficient that's why Jesus said, for I shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let that be the cry of our heart, that your word is our stronghold. Your word is our shield. Your word 
is our drive. It's our passion. In the name of Jesus, in that same attitude of prayer, if you've never invited Christ Jesus into your heart, every eye closed, every head bow, those of you watching online as well, if you've never invited this love, this God who is forgiving you of your sins as we confess him as Lord and Savior. He says, if you, if you believe with your heart and you confess me with your mouth, he says, I'll save you. Save me from what? Save me from a place that he never created for me to go to, a place called hell. God created heaven. Heaven for every single one of us that would choose to believe him, receive him, and accept him. Maybe you've never done that before. We all need forgiveness. So if you're here and you've never done that, every eye closed, every head bowed, at the count, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand to heaven. And that's you saying, yes, God, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, to save me. I, need, I, want an, I don't want religion. I want a relationship with you. Those of you watching online, same thing. Ready at the count of three. If that's you, one, you're not here by accident. Two, man, God loves you. Ready, three. If that's you, lift your hand quickly, quickly so I can see it. I see those hands. Thank you. I see those hands. Thank you. And if you lifted your hand online as well, God bless you. Let's all pray this together. Everybody pray this with me. Say, Jesus. Especially those that have lifted their hands, pray this. Say, Jesus, I recognize that I need you. Please forgive me. Of all my sins, I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. I receive my new heart. Take this stony heart and give me this new heart today. A heart to feel your touch. Thank you so much for not giving up on me and for saving me like you have this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. If you prayed that prayer here, which there was a few of you that said yesterday and those of you online, please text LIFE to the number you see on the screen. If you're here in the building, maybe take a quick little shot or go to our church app. You can find that information. Allow us to reconnect with you. Please keep coming. That's the only, listen, as you keep coming, you keep growing. Amen. What you focus on grows. You focus on God, God grows in you. You focus on problems and trials and troubles, that grows on you. Amen. So uh, thank you so much. Did you guys get something out of this today? Awesome. Well, listen, thank you so much for being here today. I want to remind you next week, once again, we're kicking off a new series. I don't know what it is. It's the first Sunday. I'm not prepared to know what it is. But I'm preaching as the pulse of this world is happening. And so I'm like, Lord, tell me where to go. So, um, but next Sunday, it will be Hawaiian. So bring your little Hawaiian shirt and uh, let's, uh, let's have fun. Every Wednesday night, it's a different service. It's not like Sunday, so come check out a Wednesday night. It's a lot of worship. It's very free flow. Awesome night. RSVP for that as well. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. You always have to wear your mask, unfortunately. So sorry. I love you guys. Let me pray for you, Father. Bless them as they leave. Give them peace this week as they go back to work, Father God. Give them divine favor all the days of their life, Father. And we pray for sweet sleep this night. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. See you Wednesday night. Bye-bye. Hello, I see you right there watching me, watching you. It's time for you to hit that subscribe button, that bell to get notifications, the like button, and that share button. And if you do, I will perform a daredevil trick. Subscribe to our channel.